Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Thursday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, a body has been recovered from the Missouri River just south of Great Falls. Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter says last night crews recover, recovered the body from the Big Bend area. Slaughter declined at this time to comment that the body could be that of Amy Harding, who was last seen January 26th near a home on Flood Road. Now, the Big Bend area is downstream of the home where Harding lived. The body will now be taken to the state crime lab in Missouri for an autopsy to, to determine the cause of death and to make a positive identification. Well, the Helena City Commission plans to consider candidates for the permanent city manager position as soon as this summer. The commission held a special meeting over video conference yesterday with a representative from the Novak Consulting Group. Now, the consultants plan to release a community survey next week to get input on what the public wants to see in a manager. They expect to post a job in May, have the commission consider candidates in June, and hold final interviews by July. We definitely want as much information and as much feedback to help you make a good, informed, educated decision. So certainly that's something we can incorporate into the process. Former city manager Anna Cortez left her position in February. Melinda Reed is serving as Helena's interim city manager. Well, two residents on Helena's Beatty Street have filed legal action to seek a block on construction of a trailhead expansion adjacent to their property. The residents are seeking a temporary restraining order to block the project after city crews started work on Monday. The plaintiffs say they made a land exchange with the city based on the city not developing the area adjacent to their home and that the new work goes against that agreement. They say further construction will do irreparable harm to their property. A city spokesperson tells MTN the city plans to oppose the motion but will not comment further on the case. Now the Beatty Street project has drawn opposition from several nearby residents who have raised concerns about how it will impact their neighborhood. Well, it's now time to check in on the weather scene with Rob Griggs, who's here to bring us some good news about the next two days before we head into that Easter uh -huh, yeah. weekend. And the operative, Janelle, is the next two days, two okay? Days. Yeah, it's it's not good news after that, especially if you're liking this outdoor, uh, you know, keeping your social distance from folks. That's going to come to an abrupt end Friday night. But let's not worry about that right now. Across the western U.S., gorgeous weather today. You notice that splotch of red there over Nebraska. That's red flag fire warning. Also, down into the southeast over South Carolina, red flag fire warnings and high wind advisories. Uh, the severe weather yesterday was in Arkansas. Today, looks like there's a shot of that in southeast Texas where those thunderstorms could rumble through. 52 right now in Butte with sunshine and a light northwest wind. Look at this. More sunshine in eastern Montana. Billings 41 with some high, thin, wispy clouds and nary a breath of wind. Also, very light winds, 50 degrees and sunshine in Helena. This is sort of a sign of things to come. We'll talk about the nice weather followed by the winter storm in just a little bit. Janelle? All right. Thanks so much, Rob. Now, before the pandemic, Montana State University in Bozeman housed about 3,000 students. Well, that number today is down to less than 300. MTN's Annie Johnson brings us an update from Bozeman. Montana State University students have had to make major adjustments to their school year, including for some students, their housing, the place they've called home for the last couple of months. Right now we have fewer than 300 students living on campus and the residence halls are open only to those folks. In other words, no guests, no outside visitors, just the people who are supposed to be in their rooms. And for the other students, MSU encouraged them to stay home if they could. We've encouraged our students in multiple communications to stay home, to take their courses online, and many of them are, and to, uh, to find a living arrangement that's less dense. And at this time, those students who left campus are discouraged from returning. We appreciate their understanding, but we hope that they can understand that the decisions to not allow them in to get their stuff right now are made out of a concern for health and safety of everyone. Students say they've noticed a difference. Yeah, it's a lot quieter and it's kind of weird too because um, like before like spring break, um, everybody was like, oh yeah, I'll be coming back and everything. And then like nobody came back. Before the pandemic, campus was definitely a very inspiring place to be. You felt great about coming to school and now it's, it's completely vacant and it almost doesn't really feel like a college or a campus. According to Becker, there isn't a specific date when housing will return to normal, but he advises people to pay attention to the current stay at home orders in place. If they need things urgently, if they need medicines, if they need academic supplies, there is a form that they can fill out on the Residence Life website 
to help them get those items. Reporting at Montana State University, Annie Johnson, MTN News. Thanks so much, Annie. Well, the number of confirmed positive coronavirus tests here in Montana jumped another 22. That number now at 354 this Thursday, up from 332 yesterday. The death count remains at six. Gallatin County again seeing the biggest jump has eight new confirmed cases, bringing its total to 128. Yellowstone County adds another four. That number now 52. Stillwater County reports its first case, a man in his 50s, and the state says 100 157 people have recovered from the disease so far. Well, U.S. researchers have begun testing another method for a COVID-19 vaccine. They're administering a skin deep shot instead of the usual deeper jab. The vaccine uses a synthetic DNA, which is newer technology in the medical field. It works by mimicking the generic code of the virus so the body can build immunity against it, but is actually harmless. A separate study suggests that a skin deep shot of a synthetic DNA sped up the, the immune response. Well, a new food menu has made its way to Great Falls. It's bringing another cuisine to people under the stress of quarantine. Spices and Spurs owner Cassie Campbell is serving up a whole new level of comfort food. The food truck rolled into town yesterday and aims to fill a new niche created by coronavirus chaos. Campbell works full time at a restaurant during her slower months, but due to COVID-19, decided to open early this year. And Thrive, a local nonprofit organization in Bozeman, made sure 2,000 spuds were given away to good homes. Yesterday, members with Thrive met outside their building in downtown Bozeman. They gave away potatoes to people who had lost their jobs and families had been laid off. Ashley Mayers Jones with Thrive started the movement after a neighbor offered to give her a whole bunch of potatoes that needed homes. The giveaway was yesterday only, but organizers say they look forward to doing it more in their community. Well, the stay at home directive in many cases is still bringing out some of the best in people. That includes Bozeman musicians who want to help bring smiles during this difficult time. One of those musicians, Dane Thompson. Take a listen. Yesterday, the people living in Brookdale Spring Meadows Assisted Living in Bozeman got a treat from outside their window. Thompson, who used to frequent Bozeman stages and diners and restaurants, delivered his guitar and his voice to them. At one point, he even sang to one of the residents while she was in her vehicle. I just love playing music and uh, I work in music, obviously, so, you know, just getting a little taste of being normal again, you know. Uh, I miss it so much, so I figured if I can't go see music myself, I might as well play music for other people. Now, Thompson, like others, plans to keep bringing his music to other assisted living homes and front porches in the days to come. Well, we have more ahead on today's new news. Many of you working from home are slouching more because homes are not equipped with a proper desk or chair. Up next, details on how to stay comfortable. The time now is 12.08, but first, Rob's in next with that statewide weather forecast. Okay, let me just ask you right now, are you going a little nuts? Do you know what day it is? <laughs> okay, it's Thursday, it's April 9th. We've already had St. Patty's Day. Easter is this weekend, just trying to help you get your bearing here a little bit. Getting outside and doing a little social distancing in the sunshine is going to be really good for this thing here. And uh, you've got a great day to do it right now. The sun is shining, the skies are clearing up. It's just, well, kind of pretty. A little cool up here in northeastern Montana where the influence of that low pressure system to the east still brings in some of those north winds. That's keeping things kind of cool, but you'd never know that that was even in the neighborhood when you look at the rest of these 40s and 50s. And yeah, quite a bit of swath of warmer temperatures right now than this time yesterday. You can see up here in northeastern Montana, still a little bit cooler. And even Sheridan, Wyoming, Cody and Worland, Wyoming, all picking up a little bit of heat today. This is really the big news. This is not today. This isn't even tomorrow. This is Saturday and Sunday. OK, it's winter storm watch season and we are in for a humdinger of an Easter storm here. Let me tell you, first of all, from Friday night through Saturday night up here in the northwest, two to five inches of snow as that winter storm moves in in the Missoula area and surrounding communities to the east, three to six inches of snow possible, four to ten inches of snow possible in these areas in southwest uh, Montana with 18 inches of snow possible in the mountains. Meanwhile, in central Montana, four to ten inches 
along the lower elevations and 18 inches possible in the mountains. Kind of the same story out here just to the south and to the east of Great Falls as we move uh, Saturday morning through Sunday morning for the uh, winter storm watch. Four to six inches of snow and then down here in south central Montana, northern Wyoming, Saturday morning through Sunday evening, seven to 13 inches of snow. I think that that means business. <laughs> I think we're we're going to get some snow across the state, but let's not trouble ourselves with that today. Why? Why ruin a perfectly good thir it is Thursday, right? It is, it's Thursday. I double checked on it. It's still Thursday. All right, good enough. We got high pressure all the way across the Pacific Northwest. It's warming up. It's going to continue to warm up as we see high pressure build in. The sun is shining from the border of Idaho all the way to the border of the Dakotas. But this, this is an Easter basket and it's coming in with snow and cold and it's going to start uh, Friday afternoon as we see not only rain showers across northern Montana but also the potential for a few thunderstorms that will change to snow within hours. How exciting for us, right? And then by Saturday, of course, the winter storm stretches all the way from northern uh, Wyoming all the way across Montana. The only uh, location probably going to get spared from this will be northeastern Montana. Still probably uh, be a little bit on the cool side. Today, let's get outside. Wow, look at this, the 50s and the 60s. Really nice tonight, a mild evening with clear to partly cloudy skies, and we cruise down to the 30s at most of our reporting stations. Uh, most everybody going to be above freezing except for northeastern Montana. And then tomorrow we start to see those watches pop up, and you know what happens with the watches, right? Eventually, uh, as the forecast models develop, that'll become uh, winter storm warnings as well as winter weather advisories. But tomorrow should be a pretty nice day with temperatures well into the 60s, even 70 degrees for portions of uh, northern Wyoming. Real quick like Kalispell, Great Falls, Missoula and Helena winter storms Saturday. Uh-huh. Yep. Same kind of story here for Butte, Glendive, Bozeman and Billings. Uh, it's going to be nice right up until Saturday and then Saturday everything changes. Janelle. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. Well, more people are working from home than ever before, but most homes are not designed for eight hours of office work each day. MTN's Andy Curtis takes a look at how to stay comfortable and healthy while working from home. So it turns out all the comforts of home aren't actually that comfortable for working. Companies will often invest hundreds of dollars per employee to create an ergonomic workspace that doesn't cause pain. And if you're not careful, bad work posture can lead to personal health consequences. It's going to be one of those things that it's going to creep up to you and it's going to come on. And by the time you feel it, you've already done some, some damage right to your, to your posture. To your, to your neck muscles, right? The, the old cliche of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure could not be more true, I mean, with occupational injury. First, you're going to want to find an area with as much natural light as possible, but not glaring. Dimly lit rooms like this one can contribute to eye strain and headaches. Set aside a work area where you can have your feet flat on the floor, your hips, knees, and elbows at 90 degrees, and use pillows for seat and lumbar support. Raise your monitor or laptop so the top of the screen is level or just below your eye line and take breaks. Keep a normal routine, which means do take your 15 minute break in the morning, do take your lunch hour away from your work area, um, just so that once again, you're moving around and not in one static position for any extended period of time. Spending all day inside can also lead to vitamin D deficiency, which has been linked to depression and loss of bone density. Whenever you do get a chance, take a walk outside. While still being mindful of social distancing, of course. Reporting in Helena, MTN News team of Andy Curtis and John Riley. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. And everyone else, get outside today and tomorrow. Up next, your latest Ag News with Russell Nimitz. We'll be right back. Hi. Montana Ag Network. Hi, everybody. It's time for your farm and ranch news. While the USDA is expanding its investigation of the cattle market to now include a recent disparity between box beef prices and cattle future prices during the COVID-19 outbreak, Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue made the announcement Wednesday via Twitter. Of course, a few weeks ago, box beef prices spiked $45 during a four-day span. And at the same time, cash cattle trade was sparse and traded sideways, while the board traded limit lower four out of the five trading days of that week. USDA has been investigating price movements following an August 2019 fire at the Tyson Foods packing plant in Holcomb, Kansas. 
that caused cattle prices then to fall and box beef prices to climb. Now, organizations like the NCBA and U.S. Cattlemen's Association welcomed Secretary Purdue's announcement this week because cattlemen and women fear this type of trend could have devastating long-term impacts on cattle producers across the nation. Well, stay with us. We'll have more Ag News right after this. Well, the American Sheep Industry Association has called upon the USDA to provide some relief to America's sheep and wool producers in a letter to Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue. ASI President Benny Cox wrote that unfortunately, the economic impact to sheep producers has been severely blunted due to unforeseen circumstances beyond their ability to prepare. Now, current estimates show a projected direct farm level loss of $125 million due to significant declines in feeder and slaughter lamb prices as a result of the loss in consumer demand for American lamb. ASI says the total economic impact to the entire American lamb industry might actually be in excess of $300 million. In some other news, according to USDA's first weekly crop progress report of the year, U.S. winter wheat is starting off the 2020 growing season with a good to excellent condition rating slightly above last year. For the week ending April 5th, winter wheat was rated 62% in good to excellent condition, up slightly from 60% at this same time a year ago. Now, 9% of the crop was still rated poor to very poor, the same as last year. Meanwhile, here in Montana, though, 52% of the winter wheat crop is in good to excellent condition. Well, down in Wyoming, 74% of their winter wheat is in good to excellent condition. And finally today, it looks like the American agri-women continue to stress that America consists of farmers and ranchers from all over the country, and most are still in some very rural areas. And that's why it remains concerned that even though 5G implementation sees forthcoming to rural America where 3G and 4G services are now, there are still farmers and ranchers unable to get any coverage. The American AgriWomen is asking FCC Chairman Pai to move forward, making 5G connectivity and coverage available for all of rural America. Now, the organization says the lack of 5G broadband to farmers and ranchers puts our nation in a very vulnerable position as they continue to work hard to provide all of us a safe, abundant, and affordable food supply. Well, that's a look at your farm and ranch news. Have a great day. All right, thanks so much, Russell. Now, Laurel High School administrators got creative, highlighting two students that earned top marks among the class of 2020. Police lights, a line of about 30 honking cars, celebrated valedictorian Abby Scott and salutatorian Trinity Powell. Both girls knew they were near the top of their class, but said the parade was a complete surprise. I was kind of um, scared at first. I heard a, the siren of Officer Anglin, so I like ran down. I was like, oh no, what's happening? Definitely way better than an email. <laughs> I just knew that my mom told me to get dressed and we were going to go sit on the porch for a little while, and I was definitely not expecting that. <laughs> I think that that was really amazing, and I don't know what they've done in previous years, but that was, that was really awesome. They made a really big deal out of it. And both girls are planning to attend college. Fun. Fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. People really, parts of people coming out right now are awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Easter's not going to be any fun. Well, no. Easter weekend, we got snow coming for Kalispell, Great Falls, Missoula, and Helena, and Butte, and Glendive, and Bozeman, and Billings. Enjoy the weather that we have today and tomorrow. It'll be nice.